Hello, so in this video we're going to be looking at monetary policy and its connection to inflation but on an A2 level. So we're going to look at how this policy works. Now, in this video we're going to be looking at five points, oh, five points, five sections. The first section we're going to explore is what is inflation, why is it important? The second is what is monetary policy and what is it all about? And the third is how, do, how does the central bank um, utilize monetary policy to control inflation and the fourth is the aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram as you can see how it works and fifth we're going to evaluate the use of the monetary policy in order to manipulate inflation so those are the sections we're going to look at it will be quite a long video I'm guessing but let's see how it goes so firstly what is inflation inflation is a rise in average prices now inflation is really important. Now the government has six macroeconomic goals. Inflation is probably the most important macroeconomic goals because of the implication it, um, it can have. If we look at it at an extreme level, we can have hyperinflation like in Zimbabwe where there's no stability, there's not international trade, there's quality of standards are falling, economic growth is absolutely rubbish, you know, things like that. Or you might have deflation on the other hand where prices are falling too fast and again confidence in the economy is disappearing stability is not there inflation denotes stability so what the bank of england which is the central bank and usually in many countries what they do is they have a bank independent to the government which does their inflation handling because what used to happen is if, if the government the government used to handle interest rates closer to election times they'd put the interest rates low so that people would vote for them. So to make sure there was no political interest in interest rates and it was solely an economics um, economics mind frame that people are working from that the central bank was created so like in the UK we have the Bank of England to uh, set interest rates every month. So we set interest rates every month and through this we get to control inflation. We'll see in a bit how that works. But essentially what I'm trying to say is inflation is really important. And that's why it's the most important goal as I said. And what the central bank of the UK um, has a target is target 2.0% inflation. Although they do give a leeway of plus or minus 1% and we use a CPI me uh, measure which doesn't include uh, assets such as houses and things, it's just purely consumer prices. Whereas in the Eurozone I think the target um, inflation rate is just 2%, it's, there's no leeway about it. But obviously inflation does get out of hand and whatever, it does not stay at that level. But that's the goal, that's the target that they've set. So inflation is really important. Now let's move on to section number two. What is monetary policy all about? Now monetary policy, like fiscal policy consists of government spending, taxation, monetary policy too consists of two things. It consists of interest rates and it consists of quantitative easing. Now interest rates is the cost of borrowing money. So when you go to a bank you want to uh, borrow money. Interest is the cost of that. So the price of money essentially. And um, it's also the reward for saving money. So when you go to a bank you save money. Whatever you make on it, that reward, that's also determined by interest rates. Every month the Bank of England will set the interest rates and other banks will keep an interest rate around about that and it will give it to the public. The other policy that comes under monetary policy is quantitative easing. Now what this means is printing money and buying up government bonds. Now what this essentially does, we won't talk too much detail about it, is it makes the government get basically a stack of cash so that they can increase government spending. That's essentially what it is. And the two policies, they're both upon monetary policy but they're directed at different, different um, uh, parts of the aggregate demand equation. So quantitative easing is purely um, uh, purely for government and government spending whereas interest rates are direct to investment and consumption that's what they are now the third point I was going to talk about is how do we connect this all-important inflation to monetary policy and how does the central bank do this well let's let's start talking about interest rates so when you put interest rates, when you tighten, you can either tighten or loosen interest rates. Tighten means you make it basically difficult for the country to be happy, and if you um, loosen it, then 
people are happy. Just think about it, like trousers. If it's too tight, you can't breathe. If it's loose, then you're happy. So when the government increases, I'm um, sorry, when the government wants to, let's talk about um, tightening interest rates. So let's say the government puts in interest rates from 0.5% all the way to 5%. What happens? Well, many consumers have taken a loan out and they have to pay interest on that depending on what the interest rates are. If the interest rate's gone up, consumers pay more. They have less disposable income, less to spend in the economy, so consumption falls. Investment, similarly, if interest rates are increasing, then firms are not able to take out money because it's too expensive They're, and to buy capital stock, so investment falls. And when we um, tighten uh, monetary policy, quantitative easing does the opposite of interest rates. So we said that interest rates go up, that means quantitative easing goes down. Quantitative easing goes down, that means government has less money. If they have less money, then they're spending less. So if C plus I plus G of the equation all go down, then aggregate demand falls. And when aggregate demand falls, then inflation falls. Because inflation is basically um, a product of the activity between aggregate demand and aggregate supply. We'll see from the graph. And also, another way to think about it is that, say, they loosen um, monetary policy, so people are spending more and they're demanding more. That means that prices are going to go up anyway because obviously costs and stuff go up as well. But let's look at the diagram. This makes more sense um, to explain um, inflation. So this is the short run aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply, aggregate demand one, and then it shifts to aggregate demand two. Now, what happens when aggregate demand um, increases? Well, we know growth happens, we know output gap um, closes, but we know that price level two increases. So from the diagram, we would use a diagram like this for price level on the um, y-axis and real up on the x-axis and we would just show that that's how inflation is affected by um, monetary policy. So it seems fairly simple. It's, it's very much like um, the AS monetary um, uh, transmission mechanism, uh, whereas fiscal is a bit more difficult. Now let's evaluate this. Now what are the strengths? Well, I already told you it's very effective because fiscal policy, although it has the multiplier effect, it's mainly affecting government spending and consumption and whatever. Whereas we know in monetary policy it's affecting C plus I plus G. And obviously if C is affected, then imports are affected. And if I is in, um, um, affected, then exports will be um, affected. So basically the whole equation is affected. That's why it's an effective policy to use. Also, unlike fiscal policies, as I mentioned before, the MPC, Monetary Policy Committee, they meet up every month to make changes. So changes can be implemented fast. Unlike fiscal policy, budget happens once a year, so changes can only be made once a year. It also has a multiplier effect what I just talked about, if C, uh, consumption and I, investment are affected, then exports and imports are also infect, um, not infected, sorry, affected. Um, bank independence has showed that there has been price stability. So although we had the recession and the big housing boom, that's because asset prices are not included in the CP, uh, CPI measurement of inflation. But all the other things which are included in the CPI, uh, CPI um, measurement, we can see that there has been quite a significant stability. There's no political interference, that's another advantage, whereas fiscal policy is all to do with when the budget is done. If it's done close to election time, it's likely to be expansionary. If it's done towards, um, well, not in the election, just generally it's done in the middle, then it can be contractionary. But there's no political interference, so they say. If our good demand increases, then we talked about in, um, investment increasing, that's why aggregate demand increases. This could also push the long-run supply curve uh, to the right. It could also increase that. 
And that's because if investment is increasing, they're buying new capital stock. So in the long run, we will see an increase of productivity. So it has long-term implications. But then again, we could say if they were using a tightening monetary policy, then investment would obviously fall. And therefore, in the long run, the growth that we would see from a new and more productive capital stock would also fall. It's also um, dependent on several things. So, for example, uh, it assumes that um, your mortgage is on a variable rate. That means it follows the interest rates. If you're many people, particularly in the Europe and US, it's just norm to have a fixed rate mortgage, which means you're not affected by interest rates. And if that happens, consumption, which is 80% of aggregate demand, if that's not affected, then the effectiveness of this policy basically does not work. Um, magnitude, it depends how much. If you just move interest rates from 0 0.5 to 0 0.75, then basically you might not see that much of a change, will you? Because it's only 0 0.25 um, increase, whereas if you see it by, you know, from 0 0.5 to 6 or something, that's a really big increase. Time lag, so there's a behavioral time lag because by the time they implement it, so they put interest rates low, you'll, you'll take about 12 to 18 months to see the effect of this decrease in interest rates between um, uh, in consumers and all, um, investment and all that. And the thing is, what's the point of meeting up every month if you have to wait a year to a year and a half to see the effect? So that kind of counter benefits the advantage. Also, we live in a globalized world. So what's happening is China's flooding the world with cheap manufactured goods. So this is pushing prices low, which the Bank of England can do absolutely nothing about. And on the same hand, we have oil prices and things going up because of the Middle East crisis. The Bank of England can do nothing about that. And this, these, two ty uh, these two factors affect inflation a lot. And monetary policy is not going to help you with that. So it might be better to have a look at fiscal policy. It probably makes more sense. It's limited, as I mentioned several times in this video. It does not take into account house prices and things like that. Asset prices, which are so, so important. It takes into account, like, I don't know, computer, paper, milk, eggs, things like that, minute items. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope this video...